Hi guys, Keith Thurkenberg Farms. It's now mid-December. Last week I went through and talked to you about the things I love about winter farming. The one thing I don't like is having to come out here and open and close this door every day. Primarily the closing part because eventually you're going to forget or you'll forget to open it. Forget to open it, it gets hot in there. Forget to close it, it freezes in there, which is really not good. So today I'm going to show you how to put on a door and a uh, actuator as well to automate it and make my life so much easier. So let me show you. But first, don't forget to head over to arkenbergfarms.com, scroll down to the bottom, digital tools and training. Got a bunch of cool spreadsheets down there, really helps you manage your farm. Also, we got some accounting spreadsheets, you can drag and drop, do a bunch of simple stuff to categorize your receipts as you put them in, great for farm. As well as the door actuators that we'll be installing here in a little bit, and the side curtains for automating your greenhouse as well. So, go ahead, check it out. Now, I already went through and built out my door, um, specifically sized to fit in that tunnel right there. How do I know how big it is? It's how big I made the door to start with on this tunnel. So typically I do about a four foot wide, 80 inches tall, 80 inches is just your standard door height in any house. So you can walk in without bumping your head. Four foot wide so I can possibly try to squeeze a tractor through there if I ever need to, or pull carts in and out and everything else. Uh, the construction of the door, pretty simple. I'll turn you around. It's basically two by fours, two by sixes, and then I use a two by 12 in the middle. So we can just turn around and show you that. Basic door design is pretty simple. We got two by fours along the edge here, two by six at that end, and this end over here. I actually used a two by 12 here in the middle and ripped it because this is going to be a Dutch door. So a Dutch door is one where you can swing the top half independently from the bottom half. I'm building this all in one piece because it makes it much easier to install, which I'll show you later. So you can do the same thing with just two two by sixes here and here. This is all glued and screwed together. I found it best to actually cut in dados, which is just a notch out in the middle, and rabbits, which is a notch out on the end, for these doors to stand up best out here in the environment. Um, if you've never done this before, it's pretty easy. You just take your board, you set your depth on your circular saw down to the thickness of the board, and you make a bunch of little cutouts across it. So you get a whole bunch of lines, and you just take a chisel or a screwdriver, and you can pop them all out make them about a finger width apart it works great now that we got it put together we're gonna go ahead and hang it in our opening it's time to mount our door we still have it in one piece and we are now screwing the door into the jam so it's not going to go anywhere we've got our little cheap hinges we're gonna put those in we've got four of them two on the top leaf two on the bottom leaf we're screwing these into the wiggle wire track so the door is actually pushed outside of the frame just slightly that when we open it, it'll sit flush against the greenhouse itself. There we go, opens nicely. Now that we have the door mounted, these simple little hinges, we got four of them again because it's a Dutch door. We're gonna go through, these two are already separated. I'm gonna have to come through and make my last little cut right across here. This might be a little tight back there in the corner when I open it all the way. Um, We'll see, might have to get a handsaw out, but I just plan on getting circuit saw, make a single cut. And cut the door into its two sections. Now, the reason we don't cut the door in half before we hang it is because we want everything to line up nicely. Again, run it into a little bit on the ground, and then we push it back and shut it and make sure everything fits nicely, which it does. Then it is time to start adding our clasp to the bottom of the door to keep the door closed. Now the top part's going to be held to the bottom part by the door actuator itself, so we only have to be concerned about latching the bottom of the door. Let's keep it closed when the top of the door opens. Remember the top of the door is automated, so we don't have to worry about it. We only need to worry about the bottom. Then if we want to access the greenhouse itself, whether the top part is open or closed, all we have to do is open the latch. Now I screwed these actually into the wiggle wire track itself to mount it so everything was flush where we mounted the hinges at, so we had a good tight fit everywhere on the door. Now, with the door complete, it's time to actually install the bracket that 
my door actuator is going to hook to. Um, important measurements are 12 off of the jam of the door over and then you need a bracket that is 18 and 7 eighths long. Uh, don't ask me why. Uh, it must be because there's some kind of metric in there or something. But that's going to allow the actuator to sit here, push out on here, and this will attach to the bottom of the door, which will remain stationary. That way when we actuate the door, the top half comes open with the temperature sensor, the bottom stays put, and then when we actually want to open the greenhouse, this is why I don't do a single door, I can just open this bottom leaf with the lever we put on the outside instead of having to override this thing to actually get in the greenhouse because it's opening and closing the whole entire door. So we've got a couple screws started. We're going to go ahead and mount this and then we'll get the actuator out and get it in place. Just like that. Here is what the side opener kits look like. They all come pre-wired and ready to go. We have temperature controller. Then we have linear actuator and mounting hardware that I actually had to steal off my other one because I can't find the one for this kit. Um, power supply. Then all the wiring is done in here. So if you need to extend the wire on the linear actuator, it's very easy just to extend this one wire going into it. The little controller box, which is the magical part that when it receives a power input, it switches the polarity and makes the linear actuator go in and out. Both of these plug into simple AC power. We've got two cords. I do not like cutting the cords and splicing them together because they come packed factory pre-wired. So it's very easy just to get a two-prong adapter and plug it into any extension cord or a power outlet which has two outlets, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and get this baby installed on the door. The installation is pretty straightforward on this bracket. We want the bigger side to face back towards the jam of the door where the hinges are. Just simply mount that with some pan head screws. I got a bigger screw because these have a larger hole in them. We want to be sure that it actually stays on there. Pretty simple. Just get it pretty much level about inch and a half up. That way there's enough room and the actuator won't rub on this sidebar. Then we do the exact same with the other mounting bracket, just on this back side as well. Again, about an inch and a half up from our brace. So that's an inch and a half on center. Really easy way to measure that is to actually just put your thumb below it. And I'll space you up an inch and then the Screws inside offset about a half an inch. Next part is to get our linear actuator itself. With the piston going outwards and we'll mount it. It doesn't matter. You can mount it with the piston this way or this way. Get our couple of little pins and drop them in the hole. Other one in. Then place our cotter pins in the bottom to keep this retained inside of here. Uh, we want to take this apart and put it away. We can actually just release one of the pins, leave the actuator on the bottom leaf, then we can take both of them off when we actually uncover all the plastic from the end walls in the summer. Uh, that's very important. Otherwise, it blocks about half of that end wall over there and limits the airflow coming in and out of your tunnel. Now we'll go ahead and go get a power cord, get this baby hooked up, and get it moving. So we've got the unit completely installed. The linear actuator down here. Up top, we have all of our bits and pieces, so the control box. And then we've got a little bit of cord management going on, our thermostat, and then up top is our power strip to get our two outlets we need because we're just running off of a simple extension cord right now. I don't have permanent power in this greenhouse. Maybe someday we'll work on that. But the unit's very, very easy to set up. You hold the set button until it starts blinking. Just like that. And it says LS and then the number. 
So we want to take that and move it down to about, I don't know, we'll go right about 50. I don't want it getting super hot in here. This is our lettuce greenhouse. Actually, I'm going to move it down to 45. Once it says 45, we hold the set button again. And it maintains its temperature reading. Now comes the magic. The door coming open automatically. A little creaky new door. But hey, now I don't have to open it. It does it all by itself. It only does come open about this far, um, but that's plenty for venting. Also, depending on the way your major winds are, you might have the door swinging this way or that way, depending if you want wind coming in or more cold air coming out, that's all up to you. Final part of this is actually adding the plastic to the door itself. I'm using a staple gun for right now, just cause I need to get it up. Uh, we do the top leaf first, we cut it off and we leave a little bit hanging over the bottom leaf. That way we have a nice little seal on the door when the wind comes through. I will go back through with batten tape and nails and nail this whole thing off later. We go through and trim the sides and we are done. Now it is literally just that easy. You mount the actuator, mount the control box, mount the thermostat, hit it with power. We're good to go. Runs great. Remember, head over to ArkenbergFarms.com. Scroll down to the bottom, digital tools and training. That's where this is located. Pick one of these up. These all are made to order, so they don't ship out, you know, the next day. I've got to get the parts in, then we send it back out. Because these are decently high demand, but not high enough demand to actually stock a finished unit because of the cost of all this equipment. So, as always, hope you all like what we saw today. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day.